Hey, what's up guys? We are talking diodes again today. And in the past, we've talked about standard silicon diodes. Uh, we've touched on Zener diodes. Today, we're going to talk about Schottky diodes. Now, I have two diodes here. This is the 1N4007, your standard silicon diode. And this is a what 1N5817. This is a Schottky diode. And you can see size-wise, they are basically the same. They look the same. They have the same markings. There's the little line indicating the cathode. But in practice, they're quite different. So let's talk about why. Schottky diodes were created by German physicist Walter H. Schottky. And the reason they're different from a standard silicon diode is their junction is a semiconductor metal junction, whereas your standard silicon diode is a semiconductor-semiconductor junction. But these use a metal semiconductor instead. And the, some of the metals that they use are molybdenum, platinum, and chromium. There's others, but those are some of the main ones. And the forward voltage drop is determined by the type of metal. So if we take a standard like a 1N4007, we'll call it the silicon diode. It's going to have a forward voltage drop known as VF of about 600 to 700 millivolts. Whereas our Schottky diode, which we'll call uh, SC, <laughs> has a forward voltage drop of 150 to about 400 millivolts. Now that seems great, and you're going to say, well, why don't we just use them all the time? Well, there's reasons, and we'll get to that. But one of the main limitations is our reverse voltage, our VR, for a Schottky diode is generally 50 volts or less. And that causes a problem. Now, what are some of their uses? Because everybody always wants to know the practical applications. Well, they're used in voltage clamping. They are used for reverse, reverse <laughs> discharge protection. And this is probably one of their main uses. They're used a lot in solar systems to prevent the batteries from discharging at night into the solar panels. And they're also used in switch mode power supplies. So now we have a general overview and let's take a look at one of its main things, one of the main benefits, which I call super fast switching. You've seen full wave and half wave rectifiers using standard silicon diodes and they're wonderful at say 50 to 60 Hertz. 100 hertz, maybe up to 500, 600 hertz. When you get above that, they have a recovery time, and that becomes a problem, whereas Schottky diodes have no recovery time. Now, I've set up a little demo. Let's take a look. Okay, I have a little demonstration set up for you here. On the left, we have a standard silicon diode, a 1N4007. And on the right, I have a Schottky diode, a 1N5817. They're both going through a 10K resistor as a load. And right now, I'm inputting a 60 hertz sine wave into them. So they're acting as a half-wave rectifier. All right, let's rotate up and take a look at the scope. Now, if we look carefully at the scope, you can see, here, let me uh, move these a little bit. Okay, the yellow trace is the silicon diode, and, <clears throat> excuse me, the blue trace is the Schottky diode. And at 60 hertz, they are both perfectly fine. Now, I'm going to adjust the frequency here 
to 200 kilohertz. Now watch. Okay. Now I know you don't see much here. Let me uh, intersperse both of these and we'll increase our voltage. And now if I center the trigger, that dash line, dash, dash line you see there, right there, that is the zero voltage line. Okay? So now what do you see? Well, what you see is the silicon diode is actually dropping below the zero volt line. So we're getting some reverse current flow there, whereas the uh, Schottky diode is not. And the more we increase the speed, that is up to uh, 500 mega or five hundred kilohertz now, as you can see right here. The recovery time is also much slower. So the Schottky diode has a much quicker recovery time and does not drop below our zero volt barrier. Okay, here's one final demonstration to show you one of the downsides of the uh, Schottky diode. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a standard silicon diode and I'm going to put 5 volts through it, reverse biased, and I've got it hooked to a multimeter here as an ammeter and we're going to measure microamps. Okay, so we're hooked up there and you're seeing no reverse flow, no microamps of reverse flow. That's with the standard silicon diode. All right, now we're going to do the same thing with the Schottky diode. If I can manage to pick it up. Okay, there we go. Now look at that. With the reverse bias Schottky diode, we're getting reverse flow at 5 volts of 1.59 microamps. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it can be a lot. So I guess the point of that is each component, each type of diode has its place. They may look the same, they may behave mostly the same, but they are different. So I hope you enjoyed this, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all my patrons. Big thanks to all of you. That's it. I'm out. Peace.